think I always have been. I fish, I, you know, I have a tattoo of water going around my arm. So it's kind of like a, a running theme throughout work uh, for all the time I've been painting, really. So, um, so this is, so I want to take you to, and, and by the way, this uh, website was designed by Maria Ferrari, who's here. It's a beautiful website. Thank you, Maria. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to take you to water, the first, the first, uh, so you can, so this is a, this is a, a slightly older painting on paper, um, maybe seven or eight years old. And is, is the sound okay? Yeah, it was kind of weird there for a moment. Yeah, it, it sounded a little garbled. Something, yeah. I don't know if it was coming from me or where it was coming from, but it's okay? Yeah. Kind of meat. Um, you know, that sort of idea of the elements uh, being joining and disappearing in various ways. And also how this factors into a kind of very loose painterly approach. Um, so when I paint, I often, I'll add a number of strokes and then later take away. So it's very additive kind of approach. But you can see from this painting here, Lake Abstraction, that there's, again, there's that water idea, but there's also this uh, sense that it could almost be abstract. It's almost like a, you know, slight variation on an abex painting. It's another more recent, the last couple years, it's called Rowboat at Night. Um, this is a larger canvas, so this is probably three feet by four feet uh, oil. Um, and, you know, I'm, I really am a studio painter. I, you know, my studio in Brooklyn, I line up things on the wall and I work on them. And I also tend to work on paintings for a very long time. This painting here, for instance, I probably worked on for two or three years and oh. built, built it up and kind of worked on it. And another thing that happens with my process is I find I'll, I'll sort of set out to make one painting and then another painting kind of merges and gets over. So it's, again, I think paintings go through a lot of different incarnations. And because of that, there's sort of this buildup of marks and colors. And there's a kind of layering effect that um, I'm, I've always really been interested in. I think it's one of the real uh, strong suits of painting, that kind of idea of layering different colors, different marks, and building up a history of marks. So, um, and this idea too of the, the boat shape comes back quite a bit in my work. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated. I, I, as I said, I'm a fisherman, so I had a row for many years. Uh, and so far, I used to go up there and fish for, you know, the entire day. It was a great escape from the city. So I've always, like that shape has always really uh, resonated with me. And I think it's sort of an ongoing fascination. Because I original one, uh, Sunset Over Water that I showed you, you can see the complete painting now. Um, just an example of this. I mean, this is sort of st a strange aside, but if you look at it kind of sideways, there's, there's like a line, a dark line on top, just above where that sort of disc of the red sun is. And then you follow that around, there's kind of like a, it's like a head. It was, on one side, it was sort of the back of a painting of a back of somebody's head. And I just pitched it to one side and went back into it. And you can still sort of see the remnants of the head there. I mean, it's a strange thing, but I mean, I see it. I don't expect anybody else to really necessarily see it, but that's sort of how they evolve. It might start as one thing and then evolve into something else as I'm working on it. And so, you know, in that measure, I, I generally keep paintings hanging around my studio for a long time. Uh, like I said, many, sometimes several years, sometimes five or six years, and keep working them um, until it feels like they really uh, solidified and found a finished form. Um, let's see here. I'm going to skip over that one. That's a little older. Okay. Another theme that has to do with water that I'm, I've, I'm really drawn to. This is called Two Tankers. Um, and uh, so again, that idea of almost abstract gestural painting, but then the, the shapes of the tankers kind of bring you back. And then the, the shadow sort of above the horizon line there suggests like a city, I guess, I hope to you guys. Um, so they're, they're very loose 
Um, and this one, in fact, I did on uh, a, a painting that was just laying around my studio uh, for a long time. And I um, did it one shot over some sort of pink areas that you see in the upper left. Um, so I want to go back up and let's see where we go. Okay, so I wanted to show you another theme because this really relates to what I'm doing today a little bit more. Um, so these are some older paintings, but again, with that idea of kind of really gestural painting, very loose painting, um, and again, almost abstract, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of de Kooning and several of the Abex painters, so they really factor into my work a lot. But again, the idea of water um, is really important to me. And in the foreground, you can kind of see the beach area. And that is something I've been more and more fascinated with, the beach, the water, the sky, the different elements. There's another beach. So, you know, that, that meeting of the different elements is really fascinating to me. And of course, being here in Cape May, it's kind of incredible because I have that, that's just like two blocks from here. So, um, I think that's really informed my work in a, in a big way. Um, I'll show you another one. This is also kind of a, a beach at sunset. And so, so these, these really, you know, for the studio openings I was doing in Brooklyn, in oil mainly, um, they really inform the paintings I'm doing now, the, which are in a different medium. I'm gonna show you some of those from my Instagram. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Or I'll just keep rolling. Okay, so well, let's do you see take here. your canvases to the beach, or are you just mostly working from your memory? No, it's memory. It's memory and just process. You know, it's just uh, the act of painting suggests certain things. I'm definitely a studio painter. Um, Helen, uh, my wife, is a plein air painter, and she goes out with the French easel and and really has to work from from something that's in her. I really prefer to react to painting on the canvas or on the paper. So, anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. So, I'm going to shift to my Instagram. Okay, so, so let me see. We'll try this one. Everybody sees it okay? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so so basically um, continuing with that idea of just sort of improvising as I paint, um, I've shifted now to um, working on paper in gouache because I find it a little bit, it's just easier to do here. Um, I don't really have a full-fledged studio. I'm going to take you out on the back porch so you can kind of see where I'm working. Um, I do have a couple canvases now that I brought back from the city, but mainly I'm just working on on paper and gouache. And it's that same that same process of just really being open to where the painting is going to take me. Um, but like I said, these themes come back. Now this is sort of introducing the idea of the dunes, which uh, you know you see around here a lot. You see near the beach. It gives it a sort of different element. And then also to have some of the grass and the vegetation in there, I find really interesting along with the sort of more elemental areas of the water and the sky. Um, but I'm really trying to, again, still with the kind of layering. And I, I have many, many uh, sort of gouaches going at once. I tend to work on maybe like anywhere from 20 to 30 pieces at once and just kind of rotate them. And generally, I try to just uh, work on a piece if I, if I can see that there's something in the piece that sort of, if I see a way in, you know, to, what, to a piece in process, um, I try to work then. If, if I don't have any ideas about it, I just put it away and let it sit and come back to it whenever I feel I'm ready to do that. So, um, so let's see here. So yeah, this is a, a really recent painting. I think the, the last one or the second to last one I posted on Instagram. And the other part of um, doing these beach paintings was uh, coming down here, I just felt like, um, you know, Helen and I were so lucky to have the beach nearby and to have that 
you know, through this pandemic, you know, to have that uh, as, a, as a possibility for a place to visit, a very calm place, a very kind of healing place. And it struck me that I, I kind of wanted to make paintings of the beach to share with people on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and then in the hopes that maybe it would bring them some peace, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I never really think of painting that way, that literally, but you know, it just seemed to me like uh, that might be something that could be good to do. Um, and I use the inspiration I was getting from being on the beach and then make these paintings and then post them. So that was sort of part of my thought process. So let's see here. Let's pick another one. I do go back. I also have, I mean, there are other themes. I've really been focused on the beach down here, but um, I made, you know, I made a number of paintings that were very much about the city, my experience in Brooklyn, my, you know, and I, I think that's, that was another part of being down here is I really missed Brooklyn and so did Helen, we both did. And, you know, it's just like I, so certain times buildings would emerge or that's, that's just part of the process, I think of improvising certain things kind of appear and you just kind of like recognize them and um, you know, so it's still, the city's still in there as well. Um, in the, in the, but like a, a painting like this, you know, this is uh, 16 by 12 on paper. And I think I worked on this painting uh, for at least three months and it, you know, the, almost the whole time we've been here and it just kept kind of changing veering off at one point it was a beachscape and then it, it they they sort of emerge into whatever they're going to emerge into um and and that sometimes takes a little bit of time and i put them away and i bring them back out um so you know i i think it's again it's really the process but it's also different parts of my life coming out in that process of improvisation okay so here, I'll show you one more. This is kind of more elemental, uh, called Pink Beach. Um, and again, you know, I, I think I really wanted these to be very uh, intense, very like, I wanted them to, you know, give you the feeling of being on the beach, being right there at sunset. And so I felt like the color, you know, was I'm using colors, gouache colors, you know, that are called like luminous orange, luminous red, you know. So I'm really trying to pump up the color and give you some of the vibrant quality, the intensity of being on the beach. Um, and I and I really found, you know, I hadn't have never done gouache as much as I've done down here over the last three or four months. And I really found uh, the quality of it to really suit. Uh, that subject matter, the clouds, the water, the sand. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I, I, I continue to enjoy it. So it's just been a real um, lovely process for me so far. Um, anybody have any questions before I take you? Yeah. Well, the intensity that you really want to get is so well catch is so amazing to oh, get thank you. colors thank out you. of gouache it's like really beautiful thank you thank you yeah i just i think there's something about the immediacy of being right near the beach and then coming off the beach and painting it's just that's been kind of a magical thing that i've never I really bet. had and I love um, it. when you really get it <laughs> oh thank you thank you Marcia. do you ever work uh, off of pictures you, you know that's a really good question um i it, it, it is like, I, I, I struggle with that one because sometimes I think the whole, the improvisation thing that I'm really, I love so much. Um, I don't want to make it, you know, like a, a tyranny, like I have to improvise, I can never. So recently I, I take tons of photos, you know, on my phone uh, when we're on the beach or, you know, elsewhere. And um, I, I feel that I need to start using some of those photos now. And I don't know what that's going to do to the painting, but um, certainly in the past, if I'm doing like a boat or sometimes I've done trucks, then I use a, like a picture as reference and kind of play mm -hmm. off it. Um, but I also, you know, years back, I was sort of more of a photorealist painter. And I think there's something in, for me personally, I feel like I kind of moved away from that and I, and I, 
I needed to. And now I, I don't want to fall back into that. So I think the improvisation is good and I love it. Um, but I do want to let the pictures be some sort of a, a, a gentle guiding force and influence the photographs that I take. So that's a, but that's a really good question. Yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, um, I love I, them. They're, the colors are amazing. It's so beautiful. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Just the color is the most important thing, you know, it's just really, because I, I do feel that when I, when I go on the beach at sunset, it, the colors in the sky are just in, incredible. I mean, they're, they're unbelievable. So it just made sense to me to kind of pump, the, pump up the colors in my painting to kind of match that, to give, try to get a sense of that intensity that I was seeing on the beach, you know? So um, yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate that. that. Yeah, color, I'd say color above all is the most important, you know, element in painting for me. And, you know, the artists I, I really love, like Matisse or Milton Avery, um, Jane Wilson. I mean, they, they all love color and it's super important to them. So um, so I was thinking, I don't, I don't know how we're doing time-wise. Yeah, uh, you're I, fine, Joe. You're, you're fine. fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking. To the porch. <laughs> yeah, to the porch. To the porch. So I'm going to stop share and then take you guys just for a quick tour of... And let's see. Do you do you can you just seeing me now or do I need to no, you're seeing you. You see me. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna walk you guys outside through the house here. There's a plant. It's a little messy and we've been stockpiling food, so if that looks <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is my studio otherwise known as the back porch. And um, I can't really see what you're seeing. So if, if, it, if I'm showing you the ceiling, just let me know. But so, so I kind of have like a French easel here with a canvas set up, which I have not attempted to paint on yet because I, it's, I've been sort of slow to get back into oils. Um, I've just, I've been so into the gouache that it's hard to kind of switch media and then change gears like that. Um, but you can kind of see the whole space here. Um, you know, when my parents bought the house in 1990, this is the first thing they did. They added this back porch and it really is in, in a really wonderful place. And I've always loved it. It has a skylight, so it has really good light coming in. You can kind of see here's the table. So it's pretty much my studio space here. You can see that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So, nice. you know, it's just, it's pretty, it's pretty bare bones, but I got my brushes. I mean, this is just like a, a table that's been on this porch for the last 30 years. So it's kind of like a fixture here. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you can kind of see the gouache. I have uh, piles of, of the gouache here. And I, it's a, pr it's a pretty, um, you know, here's a painting in progress. So you can kind of see get a sense for it's a, it's a beginning, it's getting there, the sky's getting there, the water's getting there. Uh, but again, over an older painting that I kind of felt wasn't working. Um, but I love that because then the colors from that older painting and the marks kind of come through and they give me something to work with. I actually, as you can probably tell from the blank canvas back there, I kind of have a fear of a white canvas. It's very hard for me to uh, start on a white canvas or a white piece of paper. I almost am better off with an old painting that I can paint over because it gives me something to play off of. So <laughs> you, can, you can kind of see the backyard. It's a lovely backyard. And you know, this has just been a, a sort of place for the family to come for, for many, many years. We're incredibly lucky to have it. And you know, we, uh, it's a nice spot to be, really. It really is. Nice light um, and beautiful nature. Actually, when I was painting here one time, you can see out to the yard there, I was working on a painting and I looked up and a beautiful fox trotted right through the yard. Oh. <laughs> it was gorgeous. Perfectly orange red against the green of the lawn. It was absolutely beautiful. So, um, Do you have an arts community there at all? Oh, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, 
there is a little bit of one and we're we're actually as we you know we've been here the last three or four months so we're actually starting to find out uh you know hear about different painters or different galleries uh there's one gallery here that's fairly serious uh kind of contemporary um of course it's you know it's cape may it's a beach town so there's a lot of kind of more schlocky art galleries which you would expect with you know that you know various kinds of art but um yeah it's uh it's actually a very interesting place um in that sense because i think there's very kind of we found like a really good public radio station that we've been listening to a lot and um so we're looking into that i actually the the one gallery in town i'm thinking about approaching with the gouaches i've been doing just to try it just to see what they say um because it would be fun to show them here in cape may you know i mean yeah. it'd be interesting to do and uh you know so i thought i've been i haven't really had been thinking about that kind of thing the last three months because everything's been so you know kaflui but um but i'm starting to like think that might be a good thing to do you know and just try it so okay thank you joel anything thank else? you Any other thank questions you. <laughs> okay so i'm gonna uh start up here for myself so again hi everybody i'm michelle i um have been working at BRAC, Bronx River Art Center as the education manager. And now I've kind of segued temporarily into special projects. And so one of my special projects has been to, um, to cur curate this exhibition of the uh, teaching artists at Bronx River Art Center. And Joel and I are the first and we'll have tomorrow with Maria. Um, as well tomorrow. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm an artist who um, has worked in a, in a wide range of media and large scale, small public art. And, um, and I work at home in my home studio. So I don't have a huge amount of space to spread out, but sometimes I travel and I do residencies. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and show you, in a sense, what I'm up to now. Okay, uh, let's see. Are you seeing my, are you seeing a, uh, a page that says yeah. what's coming up, Michelle Brody? Yes. Yes, yes. we're all seeing that, great. Yep. So this is, uh, some of you knew about this um, event from, um, from, my, uh, from my email blast that I just did recently. So what I do to let people know what I'm up to in the various different realms is I send a, a, a newsletter out. Um, this one was called, you know, Still Active in the Bronx. The previous one was Coping in the Bronx. Um, so here was listing today's event and showing me in the studio. And um, I'm going to start by showing you a process that I'm doing right now are these um, paper, uh, they're called pulp painting pieces that I've been doing with my handmade paper. And they're of friends who sent me their um, pictures of windows and the view from their homes or apartments while sheltering in place. And so this is a most recent um, area I've been working on. It's been very, very, very satisfying and very, very different from my um, past work. Uh, there's some people here visiting who've seen me from way, way back in the old days, 20 years ago when I was working with manhole covers. So I've got a range of background. Um, when we were, when we had the shutdown, um, I had my friend Olivier here from France for a month. And we, I had brought him in, the, he flew in the day before the travel ban. And we were gonna be working together on a program with serving tea to seniors and creating a song as a choir. Now, of course we know that choirs are the one way that spread 
COVID-19. So we've been trying to move that online. So we are, he's working remotely now back from France and hopefully by the end of the month to have a YouTube video up of our seniors singing through as a virtual choir. So that's more of my community-based art that I've been doing. Um, more recently, I'm gonna show you some process in my Instagram page where I've been um, working on this project, processing coconuts fibers into paper and casting them for a, uh, a large piece. So, um, and uh, that's this piece hanging in the background. I'll go more about that a little bit later. And in the end, I wanna show you with this project here um, where I, re at the very last minute, was invited to install a piece at Fordham Plaza, not too far from me here in the Bronx, across from Fordham University, installing my tea project. So just to give you a sense of, you know, thankfully, I'm very happy to be at home and working. It's one of my um, pleasures in the last two years working for Bronx River Art Center. I haven't had as much time in the studio. So I've been really very joyful to be here and having the time to really focus on my studio work. Um, so I'm gonna do another share to my Instagram page. Are you all seeing that? Okay, so um, Joyce was on earlier. Unfortunately, she had to get off, but I was talking about sharing tea. And so um, through the Instagram is more, of course, just like Joel was saying, it's more of a way to keep people updated on what we've been doing currently. And so I've gone back a year or a little over a year to start with this coconut project, which started out at Art and Paper. And where I, there's a company called uh, Coco and Co and they serve coconut drinks during the fair. And I collected all of these after the fair and broke them open and processed them to make into paper pulp. So that's been a real focus for um, the whole last year is taking this, these coconuts, boiling them and getting them softer and softer to the point of where they're just fibers. Just fibers and putting them into a Hollander, Hollander beater to make into pulp. So I'll show you that my Hollander beater uh, a little bit later, like Joel, I'm going to take you around the studio. Um, but what I started to do was cast the pulp that I made into these, um, basically the shape of the coconut palm leaf and um, had a studio temporarily in the South Bronx through Bronx Art Space, where I got to really explore getting this work up and trying out ways to install it. Um, I wanna take a little bit of a side here. This is to show you a sense of, I think Jillian is still on in our group. There is, she's clapping away. Um, Jillian helped uh, document me pick, picking uh, um, cattails in upstate New York, which I'll show you that I've been processing into pulp. So Jillian, you'll finally be able to see the pulp that I've been making out of these cattails that we collected together. Uh, but back to coconuts, uh, these two are the owners of the coconut company. So if I ever want more coconuts, they certainly said I can come and get them. Because, uh, well, what they've been doing during the pandemic is doing home delivery of fresh coconuts. So I'm, I'm happy because mainly their business was doing big events. And so of course they've been on pause for that. So I I'm, I'm think they're, they've been managing like all of us online. So just showing you here and here how the space at 
Bronx Art Space evolved into an installation. And um, then also Gail thankfully uh, allowed me to do an installation of these palm trees, which I'm calling ghost palms in a studio space at the art center. So that was a great opportunity there. So, um, okay, can I get back? Yeah, and and then, you know, then I came full circle to a year and this was a week right before the shutdown that we had the art and paper fair. And I, I hope not too many of us got infected there because we, uh, we were elbowing each other. Um, but uh, wanted to show you pictures from the installation of the tea that you know, here's my studio space in one form, how I managed to, to work with a smaller space to do larger pieces in sections. And so this is up currently at Fordham Plaza, right across from the Metro North station. So I was excited at the last minute to have that. Um, but I wanted to show you in particular a process leading up to these pieces that I've been doing for the last month, where um, I invited friends to send me photos of their window views. And I've been translating them or interpreting them through handmade paper and pulp painting. And it's been really, really interesting to be working this way because I'm not a painter. I've never considered myself a painter. I am a fiber artist. I'm an artist that, I'm an installation artist. I call myself an environmental artist, a community-based artist, but I've never ever said painter. So it's very interesting. But the thing is, like Joel was saying with his work, it's very improvisational and it's very much about being there in the moment. Um, I am working from photographs for these pieces, but I am using a process. And that's what I'm going to show you now that I've gone to the most current image on the Instagram, uh, to show you how very much working as um, in process is very much about and I love manipulating materials. So uh, I don't know, people are writing some things. Anyone had any questions at all? Okay. I know, uh, Michelle, I know you had an exhibition at the Bronx Museum. Yes. And that look uh, pretty much like what you have now at Fordham, is that right? Is yes. Is that the same idea? Yeah. It okay. is. The, the thing with the thing at Fordham is that it's behind the windows. So okay. it's at this point, it's not as interactive as the museum was. And I don't have the, um, the tea house up, but it, it's the same type of work. And it's all a lot of stories from people in the Bronx. And I've been still collecting stories since and the show at the museum was in 2016. And so there's been an extra four years, including some stories from Arizona that I collected. And so, so are those Michelle like a tea box or what is the tea part? Like they're like the little pieces of paper are like the tea box or yeah. what is the material there? Uh, Let me show you an example, okay? So um, what I do is I, these are actually um, tea bags and I use these to brew tea and then I iron them flat and then they become like notes. So, I see. Mm. so for my seniors, I, uh, I sent my seniors who I can't see in person my tea bags and they wrote. Oh, that's so cute. So they wrote a little something and sent it back. Yeah, so I've got one woman, she wrote both Spanish and English. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, and so my idea is that I'm gonna be putting together a book 
of their stories and poetry that they wrote. That's part of a Sukasa program that uh, that you were doing, Marta, right? I know, I know. <laughs> That's so Sukasa nice. Sukasa at That's another great. senior center. Yeah. Well, so, but, uh, Michelle, uh, at the yeah. Bronx Museum, you did that. It was a much more interactive um, thing with everyone that went to the galleries and uh, to your show. That that it, like um, the tea, the tea part, the paper part of the making had a lot to do with it, right? Yeah. Well, when I was um, in the tea house at the museum serving the tea, I would save the tea bags that I brewed that tea with. And then I would iron it flat and give it to the next person. So it was always this paying it forward kind of process. Yeah, that, that's what made it really, really special in the, in the, in the museum. The very yeah. unusual, very original, yeah. Yeah, no, it was great. And, I, and every time I would come back, I'd see new notes that people left for me. Because I would uh -oh. leave blank, I would leave the blank tea bags out for people and and they would write and they would draw and, you know, people would, were invited to go and sit. And, you know, even um, Holly Block had a photo of herself taken sitting in the tea house. So um, it was very special to see people utilizing and respecting the space. So very I, nice. Yeah, and I really appreciate that opportunity from the Bronx Museum, definitely. So, um, yeah, the, sh the one at, Chish at uh, Fordham right now is being sponsored by Chishama, uh, which I don't know if everyone knows about it, but they provide access to space for artists um, mm -hmm. in many different forms. Okay, so I think I'm going to do now is take you around the actual studio, because right now uh, we're in my office space. And going to show you my paper making space. Okay. So um, I thought I'd just show you quickly how we, has anyone here made paper before? Got a couple of hands risen. Okay. So uh, this is my mold and decal that I use to make paper. And we have a big bin of flax paper here. And basically what we do is a technique called pulling. You're pulling a sheet of paper. And so what I do is I go down and up and I let the water drip out and the paper is caught by an by a stream. So this is flax. It's going to take a little while to drip out. So while that's going, just showing you how um, we go from the office space <laughs> to the studio and how for years what I've been doing is just putting up shelves and lots and lots of storage and somehow try to keep remembering where everything is. Um, and uh, wanted to show you a bit more of this process. So here's showing you a series of my window. So here we are looking out, that's my, uh, when that's been my window out to the world. It's a little bright now, but this is where I see the sunset view. And captured that in photo form and did a lot of experiments. And what I do is I work with a stencil. Can everybody see that pretty okay? And eventually what I'm doing is I'm building up layers for my final image. How do you make the stencil? The stencil is actually a silk screen. Oh. But I don't use the traditional silk screen, which is the emulsion. What I'm using is, uh, I'm actually using a magnet sheeting. 
that I cut. And then I'm using puff paint. I'm actually painting with puff paint to get more organic shapes and forms. And that's what I lay on my screen. But then I also create a, uh, a stencil, a cutout stencil that gets painted on top. And so the pulp paint, just to show you, I've got my uh, many, many, many colors down in here. And so it's basically pigment. You know, I'm really using um, pigment. So I'm taking the pulp, a very, very fine pulp, and painting with that versus with the actual, so, in, so if you think about um, oil paint, it's pigment that's binded with oil. Here it's pigment binded to the actual pulp. And that's what you're painting with. It's very, very fine. So it goes Sounds through the silk so screen. Trying to figure it out. I came back in here thinking I could figure it out. Who is that? Oh, you got your sound, Diane? Meaning still going on, but I'm not hearing anything now. Oh, okay. Still not hearing anything, Diane? Okay. All right, so I wanted to show you how I make the pulp. So this is for you, Jillian. This is my, still a bag full of cattails that I collected and been drying out. And then the next thing I did was I boiled the cattails and there's a big container of it here. And next what I'm doing is I'm actually pounding the fibers down. Kind of like if you think of the I, the, the I Love Lucy sketch where she's walking and, and stomping the grapes for the wine. It's kind of a similar thing. <laughs> and basically taking the fibers and pounding them to a pulp, basically. And then I add them to my... Um, to my Hollander beater, which is here. And what that is are these grinding wheels that turn and slowly shred the fibers down. And that's how I get the pulp. So I'm just going to run that for a little bit for you. And what you do is you slowly bring the grinders closer and closer together, and that's what grinds them down into pulp. Okay, so eventually this is going to, these, these cattails are going to be coming something, because what I'm interested in is this real sustainable practice of um, continuing to move materials from one form to another and how nothing goes to waste. So I'm gonna pull a sheet of paper for you here. So this is my flat sheet that I did earlier. And what we do is a technique called couching to transfer the pulp down. Okay? So after making a sheet like this, 
I bring it to a press. My press back here. Okay. And um, I did a couple of paintings the uh, yesterday that you're gonna, I'm gonna reveal with you. Okay. So I haven't really seen what I made yesterday yet. And this is what I love about process is that you never quite know what you're getting. I love this element of surprise. And so um, this was uh, the piece that I did yesterday. So it's, uh, it's, it's really been a very satisfying technique to do. So, so that's basically what's happening now in the studio. Who knows what will be going on in the next couple of months. Um, I actually might have a residency up at Mass Mocha later in the summer. The, they were inviting alumni to maybe come up there. So we'll see if that works out. But for now, I'm just very happy working in this, uh, this space that I have. That's really nice, Michelle. Thank you. I have a question, Michelle. So how did you yeah. learn this whole process? Or is this something that you've developed? Is this um, like a custom process? Or, or is this something that is kind of typical within your realm? Because I've never seen anything like it. I love it. The pulp painting? Yeah. Yeah, that I did take a class in that, but and over at Carriage House Paper. It's a, a paper making supply and school in Williamsburg. And I've been getting most of my supplies from them for several years. And she taught a very specific technique. Now, I don't know if everybody knows about Dudenay paper. They're um, over in the Navy Yard now, but they used to be in Soho, and that's where I first went to get my pulp made. And they teach a very different kind of pulp painting. So, you know, everything that I learn, I learn the traditional thing first, but then, you know, as any artist will do, we put our own spin on things. So, and, yeah. Are you... Are you so when you brought that paper over and then you took the one from yesterday out, it appears that what you're going to do then is you're going to paint on that wet paper the before it's pressed. So you're yes. going to paint on it with the pulp while it's wet. Yes. And then press it. Yes. So and is, let it dry. is the painting tricky? I mean, is that after, when you just, um, you know, created it on the screen, how sturdy is it? Like, it, I'm thinking of, I don't know, like mashed potatoes or something, like how, how careful do you have to be while you're painting not to disturb it? Yeah, no, that, it's, it is like mashed potatoes. Uh -huh. That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> and it's held together with methyl cellulose. Uh-huh. And that, uh, you know, is a very, it's a natural plant glue that's, you know, a little bit weak, but it, and so it has the idea of being reversible, but yes, after the paper is pressed, it's not, it won't come apart too easily because if I go to the pulp that I just made and the paper piece I just made, you know, I can easily. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. Yeah, right. but once you put it in the press, it right. gets really much more compressed. And so it's more like, I don't know, what can I describe what it's like? It oh, kind I... of feels like a, uh, 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 an egg roll wrapper. It kind of has that texture feeling. 
So, and my dad's there who makes egg roll, the most amazing egg rolls in the world. <laughs> so, I don't know, dad, mom, can you point up? Because where they're sitting at their house, I have a sculpture that I made decades ago. I don't know if you can focus up there. Uh, so, just to get a sense of the difference of scale. There you go. There you go. And that's paper also that's um, stretched in between copper. Mm -hmm. So, and that was built for that space. That was more of a site specific piece. So I haven't really shown much of that work. Um, but again, my main practice is really responding to the environment uh, and uh, understanding that everything comes from something else. And so I'm constantly reconstituting materials. And, um, but the pulp painting is a very, very new different process. And that's becoming something much more personal. And I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm gonna show them as individual pieces framed or maybe as a book. I'm not sure yet, it's still in development. I, I they are very beautiful. I, thank you. Marta, you like this, yeah, like this low pace that it involves. Like, I really like that part because like this world of speed and, you know, every time it's like everything has to be faster and immediate in some point. So I really like that you go like opposite to that and really take the time to go back to every stage. I think that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, process is very important and it gives you a connection to the many stages that things can be in. Yeah, that's really nice. Oh, mom, we got to unmute you. What's your question? Whoops, hold on, hold on. Hold on, mom, I've got you uh, muted here. Okay, there you go. When you touch it, do you feel it higher and lower? Do you feel the um, texture of it? Of what? When you touch what you just made. Oh. Can you feel height and, uh, and valleys and you know, going yeah. up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's three-dimensional in a way. Yeah, more like relief. Okay. More of a relief. Mm-hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so when when you you're painting in something like a, like dough, like uh, the the thin layer of paper that is is not dry, so you're painting in a very wet medium. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Yeah, well, and you know what? Beautiful. Thanks. I think what you said was, I don't know if you said dough. Yeah. I, I think that's right. If you think about um, a pie crust that's been rolled out you know, it's still moist, it, it's, but, it, but it's been pressed. And so it has that kind of surface. I think that's a good way to describe it actually, like cookie dough, maybe. Okay. All right, well, thank you everybody. It's really been great to share with you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thank you both, really nice. Thank you. Very good. And um, what we're recording this. Thank you, Lydia. We've been recording this. And so we're going to edit down a little bit and put it up on our YouTube page. Uh, we're doing some musical. We're having a musical performance on Thursday that they're recording tonight. And that'll be up on Thursday. Um, and then tomorrow at four o'clock, we'll be meeting again. And that's going to be uh, I keep forgetting, Marta and Maria, right? No, no, Maria. And Jennifer. and Jennifer. And Jennifer, right. Yeah, she's up in Connecticut. That's why she's not here today. But it'll be photography and painting tomorrow. So we're trying to do a different technique, each couple, you know, two artists doing two different techniques. And again, what we found during our opening was that as teaching artists, we're always there at the Bronx River Art Center on different days. And we never get to see each other's work. So it's been great. Hello. Hello. 
for all of us to see and get to know each other as artists and not just as teachers. Right, Joel? Totally. It's great to see everybody's work. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question, Michelle. Yes, more, like te more like a technical issue. When, when I was trying my classes, if you share screen to a different device, that section is not showing in the recording. Is that right, right? Like if you share yes. screen in the recording, you have a hole, right? Um, it happens to me, but like, I just wanna know if it, that happens to everyone. Like if you are sharing your screen, you don't get that part in your recording. You know, I'm not sure. I'll have to ask Diane about it because I haven't I, really looked at the recordings. What I do know is that you don't get the tiles, the tile view. You're only getting a single screen view. I do right, know that. Right, But uh, yeah, just to keep in mind, because it happens to me, it was a little disappointing when you share your screen and you talk da, 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 and that part is And then not you have shown. nothing. So maybe what we can do is we can edit those images back in. Something. Mm -hmm. When we edit okay. the video. We can do right. that. <laughs> I think so. Okay. All anyway, right. thank you so much. Wonderful. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a good rest. Thank you. Okay. Thank Bravo. you. Thank you. Great Bravo. work, Joel. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye -bye. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Stay safe.